If you have your Bibles with you this morning, we'd ask that you turn to the book of Jonah, uh, Jonah chapter 1. Uh, while you're turning there, we will, uh, again, always covet your prayers as your pastor that we would be found exactly where the Lord would have us to be, and in this flesh, that's, uh, that's a big challenge. Amen. The book of Jonah chapter 1, and we're going to begin reading in the first verse. Jonah chapter 1. In the first verse, the Bible says, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it. For their wickedness is come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord, and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereon and went down into it to go, unto the, to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you and praise you for an opportunity to preach your word this morning. We give you great glory and praise for that. Lord, we praise, we praise you for those that are here because we know Amen. certainly they're not here by accident but by divine appointment. And we give you great glory for that. God, we pray this morning that you would allow us to look within ourselves spiritually to see where we're at in the condition that we are. Lord, for the lost to see themselves as lost. And that's a wonderful gift that they begin to see themselves as contrary to you. And for the same, Lord, that we might see ourselves in your will or out of your will, wherever we may lie this morning. God, help us together as a people come down and meet with us. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, I'll be preaching this morning on the price of sin. Now, we certainly know that the Bible teaches us the wages of sin is death. Amen. Now, there's not a one of us under the sound of my voice this morning is separate and part of the catching of the way of God's saints. We've got death to pay for. And you can take our father, you can thank our father Adam for that death is coming. And for a boy that seemed a lot and lot and a lot of people die, I can tell you of a surety, it's coming. Amen. Now, when he, as Jonah is beginning to write, uh, and I, I hope I can illustrate that by the word of God, uh, I believe that Jonah was a saved man, as much as you could in the Old Testament, and that gets into some other emetics, but we'll, we'll say that he was looking forward unto the things of Christ. And uh, the reason I believe that, I don't believe he would have been invited to preach if he was not a redeemed man. Now, I've known a lot of preachers that last, later say, oh no, I was never saved to start with, and I understand that. I've seen people deceived in that way. But listen, God don't make that mistake. We make that mistake. God doesn't make that say, mistake, and this invitation didn't come from Bethel Baptist Church. It came from God. Yeah, and God makes no mistakes. And so when he invites him to preach, I believe we were dealing with a saved man. Now, the good and bad and that good, thank God Jonah was saved. The bad, he got in a mess. And so what that teaches me, saved people can get in a mess mm -hmm. and quick. Right. And, and so we find that that's what we see uh, with the person of Jonah. Now, the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amete, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh. Now, I want you to see that uh, when you get a command of God, you move on it. You do it quickly. You do it the way he says he does it, and don't ask questions. You know what the worst part of man's nature is? Is that he questions God. And listen, I'll give you this. Redemption don't take care of that. You still question God. I do. Do you not? Uh, sure I do. And you do too. You question the will of God. You question the word of God. And, and, and that is just man's nature. And so uh, Jonah didn't want to go. And the reason was self-preservation. See, those Ninevites weren't Christian people. Those Ninevites weren't even Jews. 
And he was to go down there and tell them, listen, this is a stinking, nasty, wicked, sinful city. That's right. Jerry, you want to go over to San Francisco and get your sodomite message out and, and bail it out down there? You see what I'm saying? That that was uh, that that was kind of the situation, and Jonah knew what was going. He knew it was going to be problems, and he was fearful of the flesh. He was fearful what was going to happen to him, and, and so because of that, he got into some rebellion, and he paid a great price for it. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. Now, as an aside this morning, I want you to see that uh, there is a general judgment in one sense of God. Now, when I say that, I mean, you know, I, I, I would want to believe that somewhere in Nineveh, there was one person clinging to the truth, and just like the Jews in the days of Jeremiah before the captivity began, and they were all washed away because of their sin, in the very same sense, there were probably believers down there, but they were in the, the minority. Because, you know, and, and Brother Junior, I, I appreciate this, but I can always uh, ask as prayer for our nation. Mm -hmm. But now listen, judgment's God and judgment, if judgment comes on America, our God, our God is just to do us. Yes. We are in a mess. Yes. Yeah. And you know what? We, we scrabble our little people together once a week and we yield out the praises of God. But listen, we're in the minority. Right. So where Jonah was going wasn't a pleasant place to be. It was against and contrary to everything that city believed. And so fear begins to well up in Jonah. Uh, uh, being scared of the outcome of his sermon began to, uh, began to make him fearful. And so what does he do? But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Now, I don't know about you, Brother Kenny said this in, in, in his questioning yesterday, and I'm right there with him. I understand more about God, much more about God than the day he saved me. I understand much more about the church of God than the day he saved me. And, and I believe uh, when I'm old as Brother Junior, should the Lord not return, that I'll understand it more then. And see, I believe one of the reasons God ordained this issue with Jonah is this. He needed to learn some lessons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he, and you know what the best way to learn a lesson is is by experience yeah. now uh, before I ever started my first IV in nursing school I read about it but you know how I, done, how I learned it doing it yeah. I read about it but you know what when, you read, when you're reading that everything looks so good and perfect in the textbook it don't teach you that bone that vein can roll that's right and it can. And, and, and so we, we find then that Jonah needed to learn by experience that our, and I think the first lesson is this, our God is sovereign. You know what? I didn't always understand the meaning of that even, much less believe it. But you know, today I believe, and uh, as me and the girls was coming over, and, and it was so beautiful and sunshiny, there was no bugs out. But I believe if, a, if one little mosquito hits my window, it's because God ordained it so. It was time for me to be in that spot, and it was time for that, for that mosquito to give his life up. <laughs> right? Nothing happens by mistake. And right. I think Jonah needed to learn that. Right. Uh, he, he didn't understand the complete sovereignty of God over all things. And so he gets in a mess. Listen, dear friend, you cannot get away from God. It's an impossibility. Mm -hmm. Bible, the Bible teaches very clearly he's omnipresent. He's here today. He's in Japan today. He's at Faith Baptist of Clarksville today. He's all over this world all the time. And that's impossible for this old boy to get under my hat sometimes. But I do know that it's very, very true. See, Jonah was asking the impossibility. He was asking the impossibility. You can't get away from God. 
And, and, and when you're convicted, and I believe that was Jonah's biggest problem, is that he, he was burdened. He, he was convicted and so about the will of God, and he wanted to get away from it. But Jonah rose up to flee from unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. And so he paid the fare thereof and went down to go with them unto Tarshish to go, uh, excuse me, from the presence of the Lord. So I want you to see, he finds this little ship and he pays the fare, he pays the levy, he pays his, for his ticket to get on. But listen, his payment was not done yet. Right. You know what? When you willfully, and Jonah willfully did this, a saved man, a preaching man, a man that knew God, and then he willfully decides to go in the opposite direction of God's will. Listen, payment is coming. And I'll even go further. If payment don't come, you probably not hear the story. Amen. That's it. Mm. You know what? Uh, this morning, Bella was him hauling around, and I said, Bella, if I tell you one more time, go in there and, cut and comb your hair. I'll do one or two things. I'm going to bust you, or I'll comb it for you. And then she took off. <laughs> I don't know if she was scared of the hairdo I was going to give her, or the butt whooping she was going to get her both. And that's the way our God parents do. You see what I'm saying? And, and, and so we find then, as the Lord's people, this ought to give us credence to be obedient. Verse 4. But the Lord sent out a great wind. Now you remember this. There's again no accidents. And you know uh, there's, there's been some hiccups. I think is how Brother Kenny put it. Along the way with the work at Paris. But you know what? That wind blowing in our Absolutely. face is exactly what God wanted. Amen. You know what? When, 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 when there's a hindrance. God's in it. That's the problem with these Armenian preachers out there today and these people. Well, you know, I'm praying you'll get out of it. You know what? What I'm praying for you is God will sustain you. There's lessons in there. Listen, if the most tragic news you get, there's lessons in there from That's God. That's right. Amen. Deep for them deep. And, and, and so we find then that uh, Jonah, not knowing that our God was sovereign, he took out on this. And we find that the first thing, that God is in the wind. He's in the elements. He, he controls all that's around us. So the next time you think you're going to do something else on your agenda and still, and, and not in God, and God's agenda, you remember he's still got the wind in his belt. And he can use it any time that he pleases. But the Lord sent a great wind unto the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship, the ship was like to be broken. Then the, mar the mariners were afraid and cried everyone unto his God and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was going down into the sides of the ship and lay fast asleep. Now this is another indication to me that Jonah was a saved man because listen, the storm was going crazy and he was asleep. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, he wasn't stressed about it. You know, your salvation will take you through times like that time and time again. Mm. When seemingly everybody else has given up, you're sitting there with a smile on your face. Yeah. See, people that don't believe in the sovereignty of God, they can't have that. Shared experience very, very many times when my sister was dying. And I love my mom dearly. She says she knows the Lord, but she don't believe he's sovereign. Because, see, she thought Judy's cancer, that uh, somehow, some way, if she prayed enough, it would be gone. And y'all all know Judy will be ten, dead 10 years in October. And she felt responsible. Man, that's a miserable way to live. Yeah. And I didn't know what was going to happen with Judy. I prayed that she would be healed. But I knew if she wasn't, there's a sovereign God and she reached the number of her days. And that was it. What, what, what more could be better? So when, when mom is sitting there and she's devastated and she feels defeated and she felt like she had, had done something wrong, I said, I, I was sitting there saying, the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh take away, blessed be the name of the Lord. And all I can say is see you soon. Right? And that is the difference between, so 
All these mariners were going crazy. <laughs> and Jonah's down there sleeping like a baby. <laughs> And, and that is the God, that, that's the peace of God that the Bible says passes all understanding. When, when everything else is going wrong, he's there and he's doing his job. Verse 7, the Bible says, And they said, Everyone to his fellow, come, let us cast lots, that we may know for whose cause this evil has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lots fell upon Jonah. Now, I want you to notice just two things from this verse. First of all, um, they called it evil. And you know what? That storm wasn't evil. The storm was designed to get somebody's attention. Mm -hmm. You know what? The best I understand from the Word of God, the elements of the earth can be neither good nor evil. In fact, if anything, they're good because the Lord looked upon it and said, oh, it's very good. Right? Right? So the next tornado that comes by, you know what? It's very good. It's fine. I guarantee you, if, uh, if it wipes something out, God wanted it moved. And, and so what, what, they were, what they were doing was describing the works of the Almighty as evil, and they never, ever are. They're always good. And, and, and so we find then that these people, first of all, had limited understanding of what God would have, what God was happening around them, and then they cast their lots, and, and Jonah is identified as the problem. You know what I found in, in gospel work is this: is the problem will eventually come out. If there's a troublemaker, they'll eventually be made known. Amen. Just be patient. Right. Uh, I've seen it time and time again down through the years, and see the one that had the issue. I don't know if they wrote dots or they put little dots in a book or exactly how it happened. But they said, there's the problem. There's the issue. Now, what I love about Jonah, he took the responsibility of it. Wouldn't it be a wonderful nation today if this generation just start taking responsibility for themselves? I saw where that crazy nut we had in the White House was forgiving student loans. I'm like, well, I just got mine paid off. <laughs> I'm 52 years old and got them paid off last year. And I was like, man, I wish you showed up earlier. But you know what? I made those loans. They were my responsibility. They weren't the government's. I signed mine with John Henry on there. They didn't. Why is it, why is it the government's responsibility to take care of my needs? It's not. And so we find then the identification of the man and the one that had the responsibility uh, of the dilemma they were in became very obvious. Now drop down to verse 12 with me uh, for the sake of time. And he, meaning Jonah, and he said unto them, take me up and cast me forth into the seas, so shall the sea be calm for you. Shall you so shall the sea be calm for you, for I know that it is that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. Now, I want you to get the full picture there. And, and you know, again, taking responsibility and ownership of your own problems is about something that's gone away. You know what? I, I see it all the time up there, and, and I'm not going to say, I'll just say somewhere where I've worked. And, and uh, I, I went in one night, we was working, and I, I, I told this girl, I said, you're going to have to move to another floor. Uh, I, I, need help, I need the help down there. And uh, she goes, well, I'm supposed to work somewhere else. And I said, I didn't ask you, who you where you were supposed to work. I just told you where you are going to go to work. And, and uh, she goes, well, I'll just go home. And I said, hit the door. Go on. And, and you know, she, she, she took and said to me, you hurt my feelings. <laughs> I'm like, what? We're both adults and I'm your supervisor and I told you what to do and I hurt your feelings? God help us. Look what a generation we've raised up. And, and you know what? It's because we do not take responsibility. We've raised up a generation of somebody that's right. always their, uh, someone else's fault. And so we find then, uh, unlike that, Jonah very boldly says, listen, this is my trouble, boys. Y'all throw me over the ship, and I promise you to see it get calm. And they didn't want to do it. Nevertheless, the men rode hard. They didn't want to do it. They didn't want to do what Jonah said. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring it to land. But they could 
not. You will not go against the plan of God. You will not change the plan of God. It's omnipotent. It's forever. And he does it. They couldn't change it no matter how they rode. For the sea rocked and was tempestuous and, and against them. Where they, wherefore they cried unto the Lord. Now notice in your King James Bible, that's a big capital L. And meaning the Lord God Almighty. And remember who they were, quite, were, quite, were crying out to in verse 6? It said their gods with a little g. Now they understood the mighty God of the Bible. See, it, even out of the will of God, Jonah manifested who God was. And they learned from it. Now they're crying out for the God of the Bible, for His help and His forgiveness. You know, what a wonderful thing that God saved people even where Jonah was at. And you know why? Because He's sovereign and He can do it. And, and so this mishapping circumstance, which would uh, seem all wrong, God uses to His own glory and His own honor. Wherefore they cried unto the Lord, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not upon us innocent blood, for there, O Lord, has done as it has pleased thee. And they took up Jonah, cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging, and the men feared the Lord exceedingly. What's the Bible say about the fear of the Lord? The Bible says it's the beginning of wisdom, right? right? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. I believe these old heathen uh, mariners, I believe they began to know who God was. <laughs> and I believe they began to fear Him. And you know what? Once I knew God, who God was when the Lord saved my soul, I had an interest in knowing more about Him, didn't you? <laughs> and, and so I, I've often wondered, and maybe glory we will know, what happened to these old boys in, in the ship where Jonah was thrown over because they'd obviously had an extensive change in their life. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from a raging, and the men feared the Lord exceedingly, and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord. And I, I won't get into that today. Have it underlined and read in my Bible. Listen, they've done thought everything else over. Uh, have you ever wondered what they sacrificed? They had something on that ship that must have meant a great deal, and they give it unto God. And made vows. They committed themselves to the Lord. And now the Lord prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Now let me say this. This is not a children's story. There you go. It's to, to show us the sovereignty and the deliverance of the Almighty. Mm -hmm. Now notice in the first verse of chapter 2. And Jonah prayed unto the Lord is God out of the fish's belly. Now, notice all the other times before that Jonah, you know, the Lord God came down and said, now you can go to Nineveh. You preach it. Jonah didn't have a response except by his actions. Ever the Lord ever come by and speak to you and, and you didn't respond? Now you're lying to me if you, if you say no. Right? And you know what that usually is? Because we don't, we're too busy. And we just don't want to get involved. And now we see the flip side. After this judgment comes in his life, he's the one crying out to him. You know, is that not the nature of man when trouble comes up? Oh, God, help me, help me, help me. Shame on us. But it, it, it takes sometimes some judgment and some agony and some difficulty to shore up our prayer life like it ought to be. And, and, and so we see that now, instead of God calling out to Jonah, uh, Jonah, Jonah's crying out to God and asking for his help. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord, his God, out of the fish's belly, and said, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. Out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. You know what? Uh, I, I love this verse. I love the question of this verse because you know what? He hadn't been delivered. The, the, the whale hadn't got sick of him and vomited vomit him up yet. He, he wasn't in any of those situations. It's simply this. Down in the lowest part of the sea, he knew God was meeting with him. 
And you know what? God didn't promise to, to deliver him either, did he? He was just meeting with him. You know what? Uh, I don't know what you got ahead of you, but if you, I think he's this. If you trust him, he'll meet with you. He'll be there in the midst of the, uh, of the worst storm that you have ever endured because that is the, that is the God of the Bible. Verse 4, Then said I, I am cast out of thy sight, yet, yet will I look again toward thy holy temple. Look into the presence of God, looking, looking into where God abides. And, and you think about what seems to be the impossibility of that down in the dark inside the belly of the fish. And he says, I'm going to look toward Jerusalem. Now, how in this world would he possibly know which direction to look? But you know what? I believe he did because God showed up. And he says, here am I. Remember that? Remember when, they were walk, when the Lord Jesus came to them walking on the sea? And he says, it is I, be not afraid. Very same thing. And, and he looks down toward Jerusalem. You know what that is? That's repentance. You know, that's one thing that's obsolete from Baptist churches today, is it not? Just genuine repentance. Mm -hmm. and, and I really believe the reason is this. They don't want to acknowledge they're out of the Lord's will. Yeah. And you know what that is? That's pride. And you can, you can read Job, and you'll find out what God does with pride. When, when you come out on the other side, you, you, you'll understand that God is still God. And so we find then that, that Jonah makes this uh, wonderful statement and said, I'm going to keep my eyes focused on the Lord. The waters can pass to me about even to the soul. Means that he was inhaling water. And the depth, and the depth closed me round about. And the weeds, the seaweed was wrapped around my head. And I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. And, and the earth with her bars was brought me, it was brought bars was brought me forever. Yet hast thou brought my life from corruption, O Lord my God. Now I want you to see, he says, the seaweeds wrapped around me, brought me down to the very bottom, and there I found that lo the Lord was meeting with me. You know what? If the Lord ain't meeting with you, you're the problem. I guarantee you, it's not God. Amen. See, when we get to the understanding of that, you know what? Can you imagine? Really, he didn't know why I was going to deliver him, did he? If I was in the floor of the sea inside a whale, I'm like, think, well, Larry, this is it. <laughs> Wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. He didn't know God was going to deliver him. He had no idea. He thought death, you know, he thought death was right here on him. And he looked toward the work of Jerusalem and said, Blessed be the name of God. Mm -hmm. See, so that, that, that's peace that the Bible says passes all understandings at night. And so we find now that. Uh, he's in this condition that Jonah is pliable and useful for the work of the, of the ministry and of the gospel and what God has given him to do. And so we find in verse 15, I mean, excuse me, in, in verse number 7, when my soul fainted, fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. You ever, you ever think about uh, the mess that you get into sometimes? And you know, these are God's men. Remember Elijah? God came to him and said, what doest thou here? What are you doing, Elijah? Well, why are you in this place? You're supposed to be down there preaching. See, the, the wonderfulness about that when that little rebuke comes, you know you're his. You know what? If you can live out there and live like a dog and never worry about it, and God doesn't say, Boy, what you doing? Mm -hmm. That's understand you're a bastard, you got a son. Well, I mean, according to the word of God, right? Uh, I come in here whipping uh, little Aaron's back there. I ain't gonna whip Aaron, he ain't mine. Right? But so if she gets out of line, my responsibility. And I'll guarantee you she'll get what she deserves. You see what I'm saying? That is, uh, that's what he does to us. It's good for us. 
Because listen, we have a corrupt flesh to deal with. That's right. And so sometimes we just need a good, a good working over. That's what Jonah got. Now he's pliable to the ministry. Verse 16. I mean, excuse me, uh, verse 8. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. Now we find in the, the belly of this whale a verse that we almost seem out of context. If we get down that Jonah's problem was just about like uh, about, about Job's problem. He's lying, it's these lying vanities. Well, I'm too good to preach over that. That bunch of stinking sinners. I don't want to be around them. They'll rub off on me. So his problem was he's too prideful to do the plan of God. Mm. Mm -hmm. Jerry, did you, did you when when you was called to preach, you just said, man, I'm going to be pastoring a church with three people in it. Woo -woo. That was God's plan, was it not? Storefront mission had satanic symbols on the wall. Was that your hope and prayer? Sure it wasn't. But it was God. And so he says, you get over to them. And you preach the gospel to them. And that's your job. And so down here on the floor of the sea, his vanity was gone. Mm -hmm. Now he was pliable and useful. And the Bible says, meat for the master's use. He was going to do what God told him to do. Pride set aside. Uh, uh, all that gone, purged out by the Almighty. Verse 10. And the Lord spake unto the fish. I mean, excuse me, verse 9. But I will sacrifice unto thee. Now remember, he's in a water-filled fish. And he has no way to create a fire. And that's how the sacrifices in the old temple were done. He has nothing available. And he will say, I will sacrifice unto thee in this place, in this judgment, in this time. Where so what was he going to sacrifice? Himself. Amen. That's it. Okay. Nineveh's the place. Tomorrow's the time. I'll be there. Mm -hmm. See, that's, that, that, that's a man that's ready to be used of the Lord, is it not? And anything less is not. Anything less is rebellion. Anything less is pride. And, and so we find here in, in, this, in this situation that, that Jonah did sacrifice something. I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that which I have Bowed. Now, I don't know about these other two boys. Uh, uh, I think I know about Jared and probably um, him too. But when I said I'll do it, I'm in it. If it takes me to South Africa, I'll be there going, Blessed be the name of the Lord. See, Jonah needed that, didn't he? He wasn't quite there. And he said, I'll sacrifice. I'll give myself up. I'll, I'll do, I'll give my prideful will up. I'll make myself pliable unto the master's use. I will do that. And then he finds this wonderful thing that seems so simple. Salvation is of the Lord. <laughs> you know, uh, it took me a long time to understand that and, and to appreciate that wonderful statement because you know what? I was saved in an Armenian environment that, you know, one of those stupid prayer things, although I, I don't ever remember reciting anything, but that, that was the gist of that ministry. But you know what? One day, I'm the, God shut me. He's sovereign. Uh, I know one day we's going home and only my wife could do this. And she hit two dogs in one trip to both smells. And, uh, and she's all, you know, and Bella was all lipped out about it. Girl. And I was like, listen, if we believe what we said we do, them dogs is as good as dead anyway. <laughs> right? It's just the way it is. And so we find them after years, perhaps, in the ministry, old John said, you know what? God's sovereign. <laughs> He brought me here for the express purpose to understand his character, to understand who he is, understand what he does, understand uh, that salvation is completely of the Lord. 
And the Lord spake unto the fish. Now, uh, I have to remember this. Everybody, everybody knows my neighbor or knows about him, except maybe uh, Brother Kenny's parents. Uh, my, my neighbor is my proverbial thorn in my flesh. <laughs> and uh, last thing he did was put up a wall of tires on our property line. I hadn't figured out why he did that yet. But you know what? Apparently God has a reason for it, right? Apparently, if he can say fish, vomit that one out. He can say, neighbor man, I want you to build a wall over there on your property line to irritate Larry a little bit. <laughs> so who am I to question? Right. Who am I to say, you know, that's just stupid. Although I want to. Is it? I'll have to say somewhere, somehow, that's in the divine plan of God. And you say, okay. I'll look at the tires on my way to work and shake my head and keep going to war clocks, all right? And so we find that Jonah finally had a wonderful understanding. Everything was under God's will. And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, Arise, go unto Nineveh, the great city, and preach unto the and preach unto it the preaching that I did thee. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city, three days journey. And Jonah began to enter the city a day's journey. Now you talk about a man ready to preach and give God the glory and, and preach what he was bidden to do. He was ready. Now, a lot of people say, well, maybe he spit him out closer to Nineveh. No, I don't think he did, because it said, still a three days journey. You know what he did? He's right back where he started. <laughs> he, he was in the precise, now what you gonna do, Jonah? Now what are you gonna do? And listen, he was so zealous, he was so ready, he ran in 24 hours a three day journey to get the preaching of the gospel done. Now. Here's the problem. You know the story of Jonah? He had no concern for those people. In fact, he was looking for the, not only was he looking, he was wanting the judgment of God for that city. He would have lifted up three hallelujahs if it had been one of that situations uh, when they rebelled against Moses and the Lord just opened the earth and they swallowed him up. But see, God had a plan. And I, I don't really understand this, but I can see where men of God get out of the will of God that much. God's going to send a revival, and he did. And it made Jonah mad. He didn't stay in the will of the Lord long, did he? And I don't either. Do you? I mean, you, can you really say, oh man, I'm, I'm right there where I need to be. I think there needs to be more repentance in the day which we live. Mm -hmm. And I believe that we would have people, men, preaching the gospel and, and looking unto God for where they need to be at, the, at this moment in their life. Yeah. Because then we would be like Jonah, pliable, ready. You know, it's a shame that a lot of us have to go in that fish and a lot of us had to be taken pretty low before we can say blessed be the name That's of the Lord. Right. Yeah. You know, he only uses those that are his. Yeah. Don't waste it. Don't be rebellious. Mm -hmm. I'm not just talking to preachers. I'm talking to all of the saved. If all it's your responsibility to do is wash the master's feet, get in there and give them a shine like they never had before. Right? People who are satisfied with the job that God's given them are happy people. And people who think they're too good to do a job, you know what? They'll never be happy. They'll never be happy. So where are you at? in this this morning where are you at in your jonah experience maybe you're in good shape and you're like where you ought to be with the lord or maybe just maybe 
the fish by the by ready to get you. <clears throat> you know, I really believe this. At any time, Johnny could have said, listen, I'm messing up. <laughs> Can y'all let me out at the next port? I've got somewhere else to be. Yeah. But he didn't. What about you? Are you going to wait here at the bottom or are you going to get off at the next port? See, we, we, there's a great deceiver out there. That's right. And he will make you think things are okay when they're not. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, he, he slips out counterfeits. Uh, Brother Kenny already told that story, I think. I made fun of me a little bit when he was there. Then I carry <coughs> because I don't like to use my debit card. And um, uh, they, <laughs> that little girl down there was making fun of me and stuff. And then she realized what she said and she's like, uh, no, 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 no. But we, there's an understanding there. I mean, money is money. Is money. There's an understanding. Uh, and there's an understanding this morning for the Lord's people. Either you're in or you're not. Mm. And you know what? If there's lost to hear me among us, you're out. You, I know you don't know what I'm talking about because it's an impossibility for you to know what I'm talking about. Mm. But I'll point you to a Savior, everlasting Savior. Yeah. The one that Jonah rebelled again and found out that against and found that wasn't the best idea he'd ever had. God is sovereign. He's yeah. holy. But you know what? It gets down to this always. Simple faith and trust in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. What about you? When he said it is finished, <coughs> he said, Mouth for. Are you in the will of the Lord this morning? Are you saved? 